Hello everyone, this is chapter 2, labor supply. In this chapter, we'll learn about some labor supply facts. We'll learn about labor supply theory. And we will also talk about some empirical findings about the labor markets. Okay, let us get started. So this is chapter 2, part 1. In this part, we'll learn how to measure labor force unemployment rate, labor force participation rate, employment population ratio, and we'll talk about some labor facts. So here are some important labor facts. Men uh, always participate higher in the labor market. So labor force participation rate for men has always been higher than that of women. However, it has declined from about 87% in 1950s to about 68% nowadays. And if we look at women, women labor force participation rate, we use LFPR, rose from about 34% in 50s to about 56.8% nowadays. Okay, so this is the civilian labor force participation rate by gender 1950 till 2005 and then projected um till about 2050 so if you look at this the bright yellow one is the men labor force participation rate civilian labor force participation rate and the dark green is the women's labor force participation rate as you can see we are seeing a downward trend for men an upward trend for women with women's labor force participation getting closer to that of men Another fact is that average weekly hours for all employees, uh, total private has been declining. It is at 34.3 uh, hours per week recently. So why is this happening? Okay, that's one of the things this class will give you tools to enable you answer those kind of questions. Is it the welfare programs decreasing the incentives to work? So if so, how to reverse it? Can we cut income taxes to increase hours of work? So these are some of the ideas of uh, that we'll talk about and learn in this class. Okay, so let's learn how to measure the labor force participation rate. To measure the labor force participation rate, we use current population survey, which is um, administered by Bureau of Labor Statistics. If you go to BLS, dot gov website gov you will have access to current employment situation and let's learn how labor force is cal calculated labor force includes those who are 16 years of age and older who are non-institutionalized who are either employed okay gainfully employed or unemployed but have searched for a job within the last week, okay? So labor force is employed, unemployed. So if we look at United States right now, we have 159,244 million employed people. This is in millions, so 159,244, 159 million, okay? And I'm going to put a comma here. And we have unemployed. Number of unemployed is 5.722 million people. Okay. So you can just simply add three more zeros. Okay. If you would like to see <laughs> zeros, let's keep zeros. Okay. So total labor force is a result is 164 million nine hundred sixty six thousand people so these are all reported under employment situation so i just grabbed the recent numbers this is like the december 2022 numbers okay the size of labor force doesn't tell us about the intensity of work intensity means how many hours are these people working it includes everyone who's gainfully employed even for one hour labor force participation rate is the percent of labor force in the civilian adult non-institutionalized population okay 
So labor force participation rate is the percentage of the population that is in the labor force. What was the labor force? That's employed, number of employed plus unemployed, right? And labor force participation rate, labor force divided by population percentage. So it's like 164, 966. Three zeros divided by what's the population? Population, this is a civilian, non-institutionalized, that means who are not incarcerated or in uh, other institutions, non-military. Civilian adult population 16 years or older, okay, and not in institutions. Our population, population defined by labor economy, because U.S. population is, you know, three more than 350 million people. But those who are non-institutionalized, 16 years or of age or older, are 264 million people, 844. Okay, so you have labor force participation rate times 100, you know, to find the percentage. Oops. So this is going to be 62.3%. Okay, so 62.3% of population participates in the labor force. So let's learn about employment population ratio. Employment population ratio is number of employed. Right, 159 million divided by the total population. So we have population here, 264. So if you calculate this, 159, 2440000 divided by 264, what are we going to get? 60.1. So that means 60% of our population is employed. Unemployment rate, finally, unemployment rate is the percentage of people who are unemployed that are in the labor force. Unemployed divided by labor force. So number of unemployed was 5,722,000 divided by what's the labor force? This is my labor force. If you calculate this, divide it by this, times 100, for sure use your calculators to make these calculations. You're going to find 3.5% unemployment rate recently, okay, the most recent one. Okay, so let's take a look at the BLS website. So this is the website BLS got released. So this is always updated with the latest one. So this was released January 6, 2023. Employment situation. There's a whole report, folks. But I want you to take a look at this beautiful table. I really like tables. There you go. So we grab these numbers. Civilian non-institutional population. That's the P. Okay. Civilian labor force. That's the number of people employed on and unemployed. Which is found through here, employed plus unemployed. Okay, so you add these up, you find this. Participation rate is labor force participation rate. This is the labor force divided by the population. Employment population ratio, number of employed, 159 divided by population, 60%. Unemployment rate is calculated by this number of unemployed, 5.7 million, 5 million divided by civilian labor force, 164, 5 million. Okay. So as you can see, unemployment rate has been actually declining. Within a year, we have seen a 0.5% decline in unemployment rate. Let's go back. So you just learned. How to calculate the unemployment rate. This is great. So labor force measurement likely understates the effects of recession. Whenever you have a recessionary period, you have something called discouraged workers, discouraged worker effect. Those people who are actually 
out of labor force. They stop looking for a job. They are not unemployed anymore. They stop looking for a job because to be considered unemployed, you need to be unemployed but actively looking for a job. They ask you, have you looked for a job within the last four weeks? Okay, so hidden unemployment is a, an important concept we need to focus on. These are the people who have been uh, out of labor force. They gave up in their search for work and have therefore left the labor force. So these are the hidden unemployed. These are the discouraged people. Employment rate is the employment population ratio. So it is, why did I talk about this again? It's important to look at employment population ratio because you can better measure the fluctuations in the economic activity than the unemployment rate. So I'm actually going to go back to our, uh, the web page I was showing you. Look at the, oops, look at the employment population ratio. We're going to get that. Look at the employment population ratio. It has, unemployment rate has been improving. However, employment population ratio is around the same ballpark. Okay, so the, then keep it in mind. There is some hidden unemployment going on. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so let's talk about some labor force participation facts. Number one, labor force participation rate is the greatest number for all groups during the ages of 25 to 55. That means we are more likely to be participating in the labor force between ages 25 to 55. Labor force participation rate increases with education. So those who are college educated are more likely to be working or being unemployed by looking for a job if uh, so sorry com compared to those who have high school dropouts labor force participation rate has decreased for men over the age of 65 from 63 percent in 1900s to 19 percent on 2016 so we are looking at elderly these are senior citizens this means the life was much harder for them at the 1900s 63% of them worked and life expectancy is shorter. So you are working till you literally die. Okay. Today, about 19% of people who are about age 65 are in the labor market. More women than men work part-time. Women are more likely to be part-time workers. More men who are high school dropouts work than women who are high school dropouts. And white men have higher participation participation rates and hours of work than black men, for instance, if you look at different groups. So these are average weekly hours of production workers. We are again looking at the 1900s versus more recent numbers. So look at this. Back in 1900s, at the beginning of the 20th century, production workers worked about 55 hours on an average per week. We see a downward trend and it's less than 35 hours now. Okay, so folks, I'll see you in part two. In part two, we are starting economic theory. You have to watch this video, number one. Number two, if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel because whenever I post a new video, you'll be notified and it will help you with your economic studies. I'm also starting some series on the current economic situation. I'll be posting short form videos. 